Hey guys, for those that don't know, my name's Sean. I'm the marketing manager here at The Spin Lab, and today I wanna to go over a very simple topic, startup logos and vector graphics. It's a very common theme here that I get in The Spin Lab when I ask startups for their logo, and I get all kinds of weird things. I ask specifically for a vector logo, and sometimes I'll get back a Word document, sometimes I'll get back a PDF, sometimes I'll get back something in MS Paint, that was rendered, it's just kind of a nightmare. So I thought I'd try to break down what is an actual vector logo and why it's important in this short little video. So first off, simply put, vector logos are a type of graphic that are infinitely scalable to become big or small, big or small, big or small, big or small, without losing any actual file quality. This type of graphic is really the industry standard for logos in print material. So whenever you see a logo in a magazine or perhaps on a huge sign at a convention, you can be sure that those logos were prepared as vector graphics so that they could be scaled without any degradation in quality. Now this is really important for your startup because your logo should be a vector graphic from the very start. Now how can you tell if an image is actually a vector graphic? Well. It's pretty easy. If you aren't inclined with design stuff, all you've got to do is open the graphic in any application on your computer and just zoom in. As you start to zoom in, if the edges of the graphic start to turn into little pixels or squares, you do not have a vector graphic. That's what's called a pixel image, completely other realm here that we're not gonna go about in this video, but that's not what you want. You need those edges of your graphic to stay completely crisp no matter how small or how big it is. When that happens, you have got a vector graphic. So the question is, how do you make a vector graphic? Well, there's a couple of ways to go about doing this. I myself use Adobe Illustrator, which is the typical program that most designers and print media people will use around the world for anything regarding vector graphics. Anything you create natively within Adobe Illustrator is vector format. So that's your go-to guy. But I get it, you guys are startups, Illustrator is not cheap, and for something like just to do one logo design, probably not the best investment. So just do a Google search. There's a lot of good SaaS-based providers out there where you can produce your own logo for free sometimes or for a pretty minimal cost. So that's how I would suggest if you've never actually made the logo yet and this is your first design. If you already have a logo and the files you have are not vector, then you've got a little bit of a different problem because now you've actually got to create the logo from scratch in vector format. There are conversion programs online available and they will convert your image from a whatever file type you have to a vector image. However, I don't really recommend this because most of them don't do a very good job. So in this case, you've really got to find a designer to kind of help you out. Do a search, see you can find locally. All you need is someone is to basically recreate that logo from a pixel image or a raster image into vector art. If they're studying design or they are a designer, they'll know exactly what that sentence means. Shouldn't be a lot of back and forth discussion. Should be pretty clean, fast, and easy. Some suggestions for this. Here in Leipzig, we've had some pretty decent success with just finding student designers around the various universities that will take these one-off jobs. Um, so check around the universities in your area if you've got them. Another option, since it is a one-off job, something like Fiverr or Upwork, pretty good resource for this. I don't typically recommend those platforms too much for ongoing work or something like SEO consulting, but for a one and done job, like, hey, take this logo and make it vector, pretty solid bet. Once you've got that done, there's one thing you need to make sure of, or actually one more thing you need to be aware of. Text is not an image. Text is actually its own type of file type. I don't know what this looks like on Windows, but for example, on Mac, every font that I use in Microsoft Word or in email or whatever, it's saved as something called a .ttf. That's a text file. That's a text file. Now why I'm saying this is because for vector graphics, particularly with logos, you're probably gonna have some letters or some words actually incorporated into your logo. When that happens, if you're creating the logo yourself or if you've outsourced this to someone, you need to make sure that they convert the text into shapes. Because what happens here, if you keep it as a text file and you send that image over to someone that does not have this text or font installed on their computer, it's gonna look completely wrong. So here's an example for you guys. 
In our last batch, the eighth class, we had a startup called Qcode. They developed their logo in vector art, which was, which was good. However, they forgot to go through the last step of actually converting the fonts into shapes. When I got the logo, the end product ended up looking like this. It's not a very beautiful logo, and if you're confused right now, I was as well, because I got this thing, it was a vector graphic, and we went back and forth for a bit, and the guy said it was a vector graphic, so I printed it out on this nice big thing, which was supposed to hang over their desk for the duration of their time in the class, um, but it was completely wrong. Because what had happened is I got the logo as a text file, so even though it was vector art, I didn't have the specific text file that they used on their computer to create it. The actual end product should have looked like this. So you can see where this can cause some actual confusion. I got one type of vector graphic, but because I didn't have the specific font actually installed on my computer, kind of went a little bit haywire. So to avoid that, make sure that any logo you're sending to anyone else does not include fonts in it. Convert all the fonts to shapes, and then you'll be good to go. Um, this setting is going to vary from program to program, so whatever you're using, just make sure you do a quick Google search for program XYZ, convert my font into shapes, and do whatever instructions come up on that tutorial before you actually send the logo anywhere. So that's it guys, we hope you learned something today with this quick video, and we hope that vector graphics are a bit more clear for you, and you know how to go about with this now moving forward. If you've got questions, hit us in the comments, and we'll get back to you as soon as we can.